The smart grid is an enormous space, one of the largest communication systems opportunities you know, in the, in the last 30 years. And it's really represented by many different types of data requirements, but the prevailing uh, data requirement is very different than what a cellular system or a Wi-Fi system were designed to accomplish. Basically, it's many millions of devices. Uh, most of the endpoints are typically low data rate or uh, small payload transactions. They cover very large geographic areas or oftentimes uh, in hard to reach locations such as underground facilities, basements of buildings, and uh, are not designed to be easily reachable. Uh, the other characteristic is many of the applications, even though it is grid related, does not have power. So there must be very long battery life. There's no ability to charge on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes 10 to 20 year battery life in order to allow the application as necessary. So this is a very different uh, application space than other radios have uh, been designed for, and that is our focus of uh, solving this challenge. Basically what OnRamp has done is completely uh, design a new radio system from layer one, layer two, from the bottoms up, design a system that has very high receive sensitivity, which gives us about 600 times the coverage of other radios. It's also quite robust interference. Uh, second, the new communication system is optimized for low power operation. The way we get our range is not through the use of repeaters or mesh or high power. We basically use a low power signal processing technique. So this gives us coverage and robustness interference um, as well as allows us to quickly and easily deploy a system into uh, the field without a lot of engineering overhead. Capacity is actually one of the uh, least understood components of a, a wireless solution in the utility space. It's often confused with the data rate of the device when it actually means the overall network capacity and throughput as you collect data and distribute data across uh, the entire network. So the problem is uh, with mesh based system as an example, uh, the actual throughput of the network is a collection of the losses as, it, as the data moves from the meter to the collection device which can often be quite lower than the peak data rate, on the order of 100x lower, uh, where our system is a direct uh, star topology, which does not have the losses and overhead, enabling a throughput uh, comparison that's many orders of magnitude superior. As a concrete example, if you compare a, a 900 megahertz mesh system, which is the prevalent AMI smart metering uh, radio uh, today uh, versus our start topology ultralink processing, you'll see that we don't accumulate the number of losses from repeaters and overhead that a mesh system creates. So once you do the math of all the overhead losses of throughput, a mesh system really only has a what about one bit per second per meter when it's trying to address all the meters in a collection point. So that really throttles the network performance. It's not the peak data rate of each meter that's important, but the actual throughput that the collector or gateway sees. On comparison, our system works in a star topology. is far more efficient of collecting me, uh, meter data from those 1,000 devices that we can scale to uh, over 10,000 devices with far more throughput, a throughput of 20 bits per second or, or greater. Well, I think uh, as we started the conversation, uh, the cost and scalability is, is, is directly uh, proportional to the coverage that the radio communication system can attain and then the capacity. So if you can cover a larger geographic area with less infrastructure points uh, and then allow more throughput per, per collector, you in essence reduce your uh, infrastructure, operational deployment, and the complexity of your network. So as a concrete example, uh, we can deploy a system on the scale of San Diego for about a million dollars in network infrastructure with enough capacity for about 1.5 million endpoints. Or if you look at other competing radio technologies, it's anywhere from 100 to 300 million, depending on the exact radio technology, uh, to cover those same 1.5 million endpoints. So it's a, a dramatic change on how networks are deployed and, and operated. Well, actually, uh, a key point there is that due to silicon technology and radio integration, the endpoint that goes uh, within the metering or sensing device is uh, actually quite normalized. Uh, small differences between vendors, but it's, it's, the price has gotten actually quite low. What really dominates the cost 
difference between different radio technologies is the network infrastructure cost. The deployment engineering, the truck rolls, the actual hardware infrastructure, and the cellular backhaul links. Which we add that up, uh, you know, our system is approximately a million dollars and uh, competing systems can be anywhere from 100 to 250 million dollars for million unit systems.